the Apostle John was exiled to the island of Patmos, and there he had an amazing vision. Jesus, the Son of Man, came to him and allowed him to spiritually see things no human has ever seen before. The spirit of John was caught up into heaven, and there he saw Jesus standing among seven lampstands. And in Revelation chapter 1, John writes about this vision, and he has a very important message about what the lampstands represent. John is seeing Christ. He's seeing a vision of Christ, and when he looks at Jesus, look at what he says. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in chapter 1, verse 20, uh, John is going to get a breakdown of what the lampstand means and this is going to be very important because here we're going to get the biggest help when it comes to understanding what lampstands symbolize in prophetic visions and what that means in the bible the angel says to john the seven stars that you saw are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches and there you have it folks the lampstands are what? Churches. Now, when Jesus is talking to the churches, he's giving each of them commands. And again, he speaks to one of the churches and he says, um, I will come to you and, and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. And in chapter one and two, we see that lampstands are mentioned here, but here there are seven. So here he sees seven lampstands but here he says the two witnesses are only two lampstands. Why is that? Why number two? Well, you see, in the book of Revelation, John is given a message to give to seven churches. And it starts here in chapter two, verse one. He gives a message to the church in Ephesus. He gives a message to the church in Smyrna. He gives a, a message to the church in Philadelphia and many others. And you will find that these seven churches were literal churches that were around and existing during the time of the letter. But it doesn't end there. You see, many theologians mention that the book of Revelation was written uh, not only for us today who are reading it, but also was written to the people at the time period. And it had a very important message for them. And so when John sent these letters out, yes, it reached the literal churches, the seven churches that were around locally. But you and I know if there's anything that we know from studying Bible prophecy and studying really just the, the patterns that God uses in his word is that there are often prophetic parallels. There is often typology. God often includes material that is within his word that can not only relate to those who are reading it at the time of its authorship, but also material that can translate into those who are reading it over the centuries, over the millennia. And this is the case with the seven churches. In fact, many theologians write that the seven churches are also seven types of churches that will exist on the earth prior to the return of Christ. And if that is the case, that is huge. That's so huge. And you can do your research and you will find that many refer to how the seven churches mentioned here in the book of Revelation refer to really seven states or seven types or seven conditions of churches that will be on the earth before he returns. And so they write that John is really writing to not only to the church at the time of his authorship, but he is also writing to the last state of the body of Christ, the last state of believers who will be here during the time of the return of Christ to prepare us to be ready for his return and for what is coming. And there are evidences within the text that, this, that these messages given to the churches are for a time period that is not during the time of this authorship. Now, where can we find references to that? Well, one is this. When John gives a message to each church, the voice of Jesus says this. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Again, he says, he who has an ear, 
Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Often theologians mention that the fact that Jesus is saying that all of us who are reading this should pay attention to what the Spirit says to the churches is an indication that Jesus is also giving this message to us. So that's number one. Another is what he says to the church of Sardis. In Revelation 3, verse 3, he says to the church, to that church, he says, Remember what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know what hour I will come against you. Now, we know that whenever Jesus refers to himself coming like a thief, that refers to when he comes at that moment in the twinkling of an eye when he will appear and many won't know that he's coming and only those who are watchful will be ready to go in with him to the wedding banquet. Now, that is something that only takes place at the end times. And so we see here a clear indication that the message to the churches is something that is also a message to the last end time churches that will be here on the earth. It's seven states of Christianity, you could say, seven types of Christianity, seven conditions of his body. And he says to many believers, wake up, be watchful, or I will come like a thief. You see how deep this is? The message to the churches is really a message to all of us. We see more of this when he speaks to the church of Philadelphia, when he says in verse 10, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. And I am coming soon. Now, the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world, we know this is an allusion to the time of tribulation. Now, how do you interpret this when he says, I will keep you from the hour of trial? Some say that this is referring to some type of a, of a, a rapture to not experience time of trial. Some say this is referring to him protecting his people during trial by keeping them from it because they will not be able to be tempted or harmed with the plagues that will be poured out on the world. So there are different interpretations with that. And uh, one day we're going to have to get into that as well. But we see here that this is referring to the time of, of tribulation. And so I just want to show a few verses here. And there are other indicators through this, that this is referring to the state of really all believers on the earth. And he says that there are certain churches that uh, need to wake up. There are certain churches he speaks to here that need to stop giving into idolatry. There are certain churches that need to stop giving into their material possessions. And there are certain churches that he refers to here that are honorable by him. Now, again, we have to go back to the question. Why does it say the two lampstands? Well, what you will find is this. When John is writing to these seven churches, five of them were criticized, like the church of Laodicea. He says to them, you are lukewarm. You're not either hot or cold, and I will spit you out of my mouth, for you say that I am rich and I have prospered. You see, there are many states of Christianity that Jesus is speaking to here. He's speaking to the Christians who have become lazy. He's speaking to the Christians that are not on fire for the Lord. And he's speaking to the Christians that are completely backslidden. And he says, if you, if you are that way, when I return, you're going to be spitting out. This is a message to the end time believers as well. And he says, those, those who I love, I reprove and discipline. And so Jesus is speaking to each church. And he's telling five of the churches that they have a lot they need to clean up. They have a lot they need to get right. And I believe if Jesus was... Speaking to the church today, he would speak to a lot of us and say, there's some things we got to work on. There's some things we got to get right. Okay. And all the, and this is what you will find. Every state of Christianity that needs to be improved, you will find the correction right here when he speaks to the seven churches. And so even though today there may not be seven literal churches, this is a type or a prophetic foreshadowing of the type of condition of the church that would be on the earth prior to his return and five were criticized by Jesus but what you will find is that there were only two of the seven churches here that were spoken of favorably by Jesus there were only two that were not rebuked the church of Smyrna and the church of Philadelphia and what you will find is 
there are parallels in the words that are given to Philadelphia and the Church of Smyrna. There are many similarities that are spoken regarding them. One of them is how they both will be two churches in the end times that will face specific criticism from certain groups. We see in Revelation 2, 8 that the Church of Smyrna are going to be criticized by those who are saying they are the true Jews. We see that in Revelation 3, 7, the Church of Philadelphia will also face criticism by those who are claiming that they are the true Jews. And so it's amazing because that's what we see today. We see that the body of Christ is being criticized by many people who are claiming that they are the real people of God. And they're claiming that everyone else, if you're not in my certain specific heritage, you're not going to be the people of God. All kinds of people are being criticized by certain groups for not being a certain heritage. And Jesus says to his church, he says, look, you're going to be criticized by people who are really from the synagogue of Satan, claiming they are the true people of God. But we know that to be the people of God, what do you have to be? Someone who is in faith in Jesus. And if you have faith in Jesus, no matter your race, no matter your color, you are the people of God. So Jesus says, look, yes, you're going to be criticized by the people who are from the synagogue of Satan claiming they are the real Jews. But don't worry. Behold, I will make them come and bow down at your feet and they will learn that I have loved you. And why has he loved us? Because we know that our heritage comes not from the color of our skin, but by the confession of our faith. The vision of the two lampstands allows us to understand something very important regarding the two witnesses. Because if the two witnesses represent God's people, who will be given power to testify about him in a mighty way, the next question is, will all believers be empowered? Well, I believe based upon this, the answer would be no. Because if the seven lampstands represents symbolically all believers and only two are appointed as God's powerful end time witnesses, that might mean that less than 30% of believers will be operating in that type of power. And why is that? Why is that? Because God is holy. And he will likely only give that type of power to those who are like the two lampstands, the churches of Philadelphia and Smyrna. Because those lampstands were faithful. They had repented and they were seeking God with all of their heart and pleasing him. The other lampstands were idolatrous. Some were consumed with their prosperity. And some were so backslidden that they were still living in sin. And the fact of the matter is this. You cannot continue a sinful lifestyle and expect God's power to shine through your life. And so when we read that the two witnesses are clothed in sackcloth, which represents a repentant heart, and we see that they are only two out of seven lampstands, my friends, you know, this is likely a call for the church to repent to seek God, to put Christ first, to stop the lust, to throw away the drugs, to quit the pornography, to set aside the idols, to eliminate the greed, and to seek God with all of our hearts like we've never sought him before. Because my friends, if we are that final generation who will be here before Christ returns, if we are not seeking God with all of our heart, if, if we are lukewarm, oh, we would be in fear when these things begin. But if we have been seeking him, we would be supernaturally empowered to not only testify and witness for him, but to endure with boldness whatever persecution could come our way. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves is, if we happen to be here, when the two witnesses are given power, will we be among that 30%?